Florian Anderson. I'm the writer-director of Unforgotten. It's a 20-minute drama about grief, but the grieving of someone who's still alive. If one person might be grieving and suffering for one reason, that doesn't mean that the other person is not for maybe other reasons. And like you said, it takes more time or less time for different people to get over stuff and so to be gentle and respectful of other people and of their process. I am promoting a film called Replica. I play the character Mickey. He definitely had some um, bad qualities but he does have a, little, a lot of good qualities. Is that a fun opportunity to find that humanity and bring it to life that, that shows maybe the light side of that darker character? Definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the type of characters that you typically play, or was this out of the ordinary for you? You know what? It is a little bit out of the ordinary for me. We, we originally did it as a play. That was really nice, getting to stretch and not do the same thing that I usually do. I personally like rehearsal, so we had a couple of days of rehearsal that I, I really enjoyed because we had to shoot a lot. We were shooting 12 pages a day. Hi, I'm Leila Elmas Rose. I'm here with Replica. I'm an actress and producer. So many moments were very memorable. We had an amazing cast and crew on this one and fantastic locations. I think the struggle, which you're probably hearing a lot, is we shot during COVID, it was during the height of COVID. So that was just a little bit of a struggle to kind of overcome, but uh, everybody pulled through and it was, it was a lot of fun. Naomi Grossman, I'm here with Replica. And what's your role in Replica? I am Anna. Tell me about what the process was like for you with shooting this. I mean, I'm an extreme character actress. Okay. Most people know me as Pepper from American Horror Story, yeah. which, you know, I'm not recognizable as that. But, you know, it's like a, a really extreme character very far from myself. Sure. And so is this. I mean, I'm recognizable in it. I mean, I have no desire to be myself. I, I should probably talk to a therapist about that <laughs> instead of you. But, um, like, that's why I'm an actor, is I want to explore other people. Yeah. I want to, you know, I'm myself all day, every day, yeah, especially right. on strike. So I'm trying to not do that. I'm really excited for this. I'm really excited for the movie. Paul Tully wrote it, directed it. It's just a really good piece of art that I think a lot of people, as they see it and as it gets out, is just going to let them feel a lot of different emotions that need to be felt right now. Well, what was your role in Replica? So I'm an executive producer. I've been along with the journey, and it's been an incredible ride. And I'm really grateful, more than anything, that I was able to help him support it on the financial side. You know, he's an artist, I'm a business person, and I'm glad that we could help each other get this thing done. That's what's so great about this movie, even for me, every time I see it, there are things in this movie that are gonna force you to go, I can no longer look at this this way, I have to go this way. And you do a total 180, and we've had such a response to the people that we can get to see it, and we're just waiting for it to go really mainstream and let everyone see it, and it will do well. My name is Luke Tenney, and we are here supporting Jade, because we, we made it. I'm Noam Shapiro, co-creator of Jade with Luke Tenney. Fabulous, and tell me a little bit about Jade. What can audiences expect? Uh, so it's about a father who's fighting to back, get back custody of his daughter, and I cut his hair before that court case. So it is a dramedy, and it is a film about brotherhood. He actually cut hair? Like in real life. Oh. So in the movie, he's cutting my hair. I'm getting faded up, like legit. Everything you see is real. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. No, no acting, just authenticity. I think after we did all of our dialogue, we had a bunch of like inserts. Okay. And there was something about watching the flow of barbers in their, in their zone. That for me created a, a deeper appreciation for people who cut hair. And my homeboy, you know? Yeah, we have, we have this motto when we are writing and shooting called Rhythm Over Everything, and we're both musically inclined people, okay. and so we just really wanted to prioritize, obviously the storytelling, but how the rhythm fit into that. Hi, I'm Serena Ryan. We're from Jade. Hi, I'm Haley Hogan. And I'm Ethan Itzkow. So we're from Schmeth Films, which is a co-producer on the movie. Ethan and I co-produced as well, uh, including Haley, and I also AD'd. Is there any moment of production that stood out for you guys that was maybe the most magical or memorable or even something that was a challenge that then was overcome that you're really proud of? I mean, I think it's always the most magical moment to watch it when it's finished. You have an image in your mind and, and you're always kind of recreating the film when it comes to the edit. So, I mean, this will be even more magical. We've never seen it on the big screen. So, here we go. I am with Lucy's Last Song, um, directed by Roscoe Guerrero and produced by Robert Craighead. And I played the title character, Lucy, and it's a very um, dark and mysterious and sort of like haunted film. Tonight is the premiere, yeah. What are you feeling and thinking right now? 
I'm thinking I get to see it on a big screen, like with the whole team. This is like the whole reason why we do it, right? Yeah. To be able to like have other people watch and for us to get to see it and to get that audience feeling is like everything. I'm the writer and director of Lucy's Last Song. So there would be no Lucy's Last Song without you. That's right, yeah. <laughs> I was her first song and her last song. There you go. <laughs> Where did the inspiration come from for the film? Uh, so the film is about a, a daughter and a, a father um, reconnecting after uh, quite a long time. And I had a similar experience with my own father. Um, um, it's very musically based. I'm from the music industry. Um, and so this is kind of a good segue into uh, narrative filmmaking, but at the same time, you know, talking about loss and family and reconnecting and uh, not, not getting stuck on, on uh, trivial bullshit. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Language alert, sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> okay, was there a moment during production that maybe stood out to you as the most memorable or most magical or even something that was a challenge yeah. that you overcame and are proud of? You know, we so we shot 20 pages in two days, right? So it was, it was, we crammed a lot in there and it's because of budget and because of the location. Magical moment um, is there's a, a scene in the middle where Robert and Bria, the two lead actors, sing to each other. She's a musician and this is a moment that they're connecting and it's the end of the night, it's probably two o'clock in the morning, everybody's completely dead, almost wants to quit, and they start singing. And it's a cappella, and their voices just carry through the entire room, and set every, all the crew, everybody's like, you know, so tired, and everybody's on their feet, and they're just clapping, and it's just, it was just such a big moment at the end of it, and we're like, this is why we make movies, you know? Yeah. That's phenomenal. So is is it fair to say that that might be your favorite moment of the film as well? I, yes and no. Um, there is a supernatural element to it, and I'm a guy that comes from horror and rock and roll, and so there's some cool stuff stuff that happens there, but um, that that being, you know, the most sort of visceral and, and just from the soul moment, that would definitely be it. We're here to support Separate. It's uh, a film. I am the co-writer, producer, and actor in the film. I was a producer in the film as well. Where did the inspiration come from? Came from my daughter's acting coach and myself. We wanted to write a piece for her. I wanted to do something that would make a difference. I wanted it to be personal. So uh, we put together this story about what if uh, gay marriage was overturned and they were taking kids away. Because of all the things that were happening in the news, we decided to make it into a film. I think the most challenging part of it was just the shoot day because we only had eight hours to shoot the entire film and we were able to do it. So it was a wonderful to be able to have the crew, to have the actors, the talent, be everybody on point so we could get the day. And right. it was perfectly shot during that sunset moment. We only had two or three takes for that and we all made it happen. So it was really great. Not only were we making our film, my daughter and I were on a reality show called Raising an Effing Star, and they were <laughs> they were documenting e, us. It. <laughs> yeah, it's on an E, but they were documenting us making the film. So we also had to shoot within their so time frame. So we had to frame, shoot within a within shoot. Within our time frame. So that was a challenge, but we were able to get through it. It was yeah. amazing. My name is Nick Neary. I'm a producer on a film called Rabbit Hole that Aaron here wrote and directed. What was the experience like for you producing it? First time I've ever filmed in Ohio. I'm from there, born and raised. Me and Aaron actually went to high school together. Yeah, we kind of all went on our separate ways after high school. And he went to New York and I moved to LA. And we both got into film and we didn't even know that um, until about, what, two years ago? Yeah. yeah. Where we linked up on social media. He was like, oh, you're in film? I was like, you're in film too. And he's like, I got this idea for a script I want to shoot back home. And we're like, okay, cool, let's do it. We got all our locations for free there. It was amazing, you know, all the, the people in our community who helped out to do all of that. So yeah. Yeah, my, my dad was an extra, so that kind of stuff helped. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's yeah, cute. for that's sure. Totally fine. <laughs> I'm supporting Lost Cause. It's um, up for best LGBTQ feature, I believe. It's um, actually not showing in person, but it's showing in one of the online blocks. But yeah, I was a camera assistant on that and decided to come out and check it out. It's a incredible film making memory for me. Is there anything you hope that audiences take away from from seeing it? I mean the movie um, you know has, holds a very strong message of like you know em embracing like your inner self um, and I think that it uses cosplay as sort of a vehicle of like people who are um, misunderstood you know being able to be who they like really feel like you know uh, they are and I think that's a very important message with all sorts of like societal issues today you know I think it's something that would resonate with a lot of people mm -hmm.